Sandy, who helped me with the setup and my PowerPoint and so on. As Diana mentioned, I'm Eleanor Yick, and I'm president of the League of Women Voters of Southwest Santa Clara Valley. It's quite a uh, mouthful. We cover four cities, Los Gatos, Saratoga, Campbell, and Montessorino. After 42 years in public education, as a teacher, a principal, an assistant superintendent, and a superintendent, I retired and became active in the League of Women Voters. Why? Because I support their mission and I support their goals. The League of Women Voters is a national, state, and local organization. When you join the local level, you automatically become a member of the other two levels. All levels of the League support the dual mission of the League, which is to empower voters and defend our democracy. We empower voters through our candidate forums, our pros and cons events, and other public forums and education on the ballot issues, which I'm gonna talk a little bit more about in a few minutes. We defend our democracy through our advocacy work on topical issues and legislation. All levels of the League are aligned with the National League's initiative, which is focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion as we approach the second century of our existence, which will begin in 2020. So the League has been around for 100 years. How does the League do its work? At the local level, we are strictly a volunteer organization. We depend on people like you and your friends who are concerned about our democracy, our government, topical issues, and are willing to spend their time promoting those issues in the local community. Tonight, I am going to give you a mini version of an event that we do during the election cycle. We focus on two things. Again, we want to empower voters. So we do candidate forums, which are non-biased and equally give voice to any candidate who is running for an office. We also do an event that I love, and I've been doing it now for almost 10 years, called Pros and Cons. We take the ballot issues, we study them, and then we give talks, like tonight, on the pro arguments and the con arguments. And then we tell you what some supporters might say, and what some opposers might say. And then very importantly, we tell you what your vote means. Because you know, sometimes that yes is tricky and the no is tricky. So you need to know, what am I really voting for here tonight? Now, when we typically do a pro and con presentation this year, with all the ballot issues and some local issues, it takes 75 minutes. I'm going to do a mini version in 10, just to give you a flavor, OK? So let's begin by moving over, thank you, uh, to, let me see if I do this right. To the left. It was working before. <laughs> I can just forward it if we have to. OK. You need, yeah. is it working now? It work on the so I have to aim it towards here? Yeah, a okay, so I should stay yeah. relatively close to here? Yeah, you don't have to close to here, you can stand here. Oh, <laughs> uh, maybe you can change. No, 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 no. no. You know? No, okay. I'm like this, so okay? Yes, and just pointed to it. Okay, so let's get started. As I mentioned, or maybe I didn't emphasize, the League of Women Voters has two distinct roles. Number one, voter service, which is what I'm doing tonight, providing you with some non-biased information. 
Just for your information, also, the League never endorses a candidate or a political party. If anyone ever tells you the League supports this person, not true. Party, not true. But we are also an advocacy organization. When we have studied an issue, developed a position statement on it, then we watch legislation primarily, and we come out in support of that legislation, or we oppose it, or we take a neutral stance. Oops. Tonight, or shortly actually, how many of you got your, finally got your election ballot booklet in the mail? Came out a little bit late this year. They're supposed to come out a minimum of 38 days ahead, but I just got mine yesterday, so I think they're slow getting them out. And that's such an important document to really know what you're doing. You're going to be asked as a voter to vote on candidates, but you're also going to be asked to vote on some ballot measures. And if it's a measure that's going to affect potentially the whole state, it's called a proposition. If it's a local measure, it's called a measure. Now, how does a state proposition get on the ballot? Number one, can get there from the state legislature with various percentages of votes depending on what it is, or it can get on it from a citizen's initiative. And we've probably all met people getting signatures and they have to get so many and they have to be verified and then they qualify for the ballot. So that's how the state propositions go on there. This year we have four local measures and they come from the individual cities, towns, county, or school board. The general election is coming up. There are 11 state ballot measures. measures. Number nine is no longer there. Does anybody know why? Right, they took it off. The Supreme Court did because it was to divide California into three legal entities. And the Supreme Court decided, uh-uh unconstitutional to put that there. And again, there are four local measures. Now, where do we, as a League of Women Voters, get our information? We get it primarily from the State Registrar of Voters. If you go onto that website, you can actually download the booklet even earlier than what we get it in the mail, and everything is in there. I almost consider that, when I'm studying ballot measures, kind of the um, college and grad school level because it's complex, it's difficult to read sometimes, the sentence construction in some of these ballot measures is really complex, but it's the best source. You're kind of going to the horse's mouth. You can get the actual ballot, you can get the arguments, you can get the people who signed for it, and the part I love best are the rebuttals because when you read the rebuttals, you really find out a lot more information. And if there's a rebuttal to the rebuttal, you really find out information. So I encourage you to do that. So that's our prime source, is from the Secretary of State. Since there are some local measures this year, we had to go to Santa Clara County to the Register of Voters. And other local measures, you actually go to your local town or city clerk. And then the League has publications. They put out a separate bo uh, booklet called Pros and Cons, and I consider that kind of the high school book. And then they put out another guide called An Easy Voter, of which is out in the library, I mean out in the lobby, and you can take a copy of it, and I consider that kind of the very baseline. It's really simple, they modify the language, it's very simple to follow. And I'd encourage you to look about those. Now people often ask me, well what are the league positions on these ballot measures? Because the league has taken some positions, but that's not our purpose when we're doing a pro and con. Our purpose is to give you the pro and the con, and you make up your own mind. And if you want to see what the League recommends, you can go and look at that. But we want you to be the informed voter and you to make the decision. These are the ballot measures, the 11 state ones, and the four local. Now, before I go any further with these, who can tell me what are some pressing issues in California? Housing, transportation, infrastructure, pardon me, immigration. Do you see any ballot measures that address those things? Exactly, exactly. Okay, the first four are bond measures, 
And we probably all know that we pay, and we all pay for bond measures. We either pay through uh, an assessment on our property tax, or it comes from the general fund, which of course is from property taxes and sale taxes and so on and so forth. If I go a little bit further, hmm, look at number five. That has something to do with housing. We're gonna talk about that. And if I look at certainly number six, that's all about infrastructure and some taxes. Um, number seven is an easy one as far as I'm concerned. It's an advisory measure. Even if the electorate votes for it, it has to go to the state legislature that has to approve it with a two-thirds vote. Not easy to get. And then it has to go to the federal government, and they have the final decision. So it's an advisory measure about whether or not we want daylight savings time. And you see some other, another one related to housing, local rent control on residential property. And the local issues, again, a sales tax, and another bond measure. So I'm going to try in the next 10 minutes to take you through very briefly how we do these pros and cons. I give you the bare bones. If you really wanted the detail and you came to one of our typical sessions, you would hear about people who support them, people who oppose them. Most importantly, you can read the part or learn about the legislative analysis, what is the impact of this provision, this ballot measure on the state budget, which is really important to know. And you can also find out very importantly, who are the major donors, positive and negative. And I wanna clarify that. Some people say, oh, when I heard so-and-so contributed so much money, uh, that made me really leery about that. Not necessarily. You look at the organization that put the money out there, and if you know that organization and agree with its goals, great. If you know that organization and you don't agree with its goals, that gives you another piece of information. Okay? So, very quickly, we're going to go through the six, maybe four up there, actually, that are uh, some measures that I think are concerning for us. Okay, Proposition 1. Seems pretty simple. It authorizes the state to sell $4 billion in general obligation bonds, this is the important part, to fund existing housing programs for low-income residents, veterans, farm workers, plus some allotments for mobile homes and transit-oriented housing. This is becoming a very popular term, transit housing transit-oriented housing. And there you can see how they're allocating out some of the money. And the bottom, it also provides housing assistance for buyers, infrastructure financing, and matching grants. Now we go to arguments for it. And we always point out, again, we get these arguments from the state registrar of voters. These arguments are written by the people who want this proposition to pass. So they look for the most telling comments that they can make that would convince people to vote for their proposition. They may or may not be true. They're biased statements. So you need to keep that in mind when you read them. So these people say, who support this, this is the only proposition that directly addresses the housing issue in California without raising taxes. One billion to CalVet will create affordable homes for hardworking people. Prop one, if it's passed, will create tens of thousands of jobs using the money to build. Now, typically we'd put in who supports it but I'm just gonna go on to who opposes it. These people say, wait a minute, how far in debt is the government already? You wanna sell more? Proposition one would only provide housing for a small number of people. And lastly, this is becoming a big issue that we see coming up. Should voters continue to finance projects through higher property taxes when California's property tax system is so unfair? Because business property can be, and is often leased rather than sold, 
Proposition 13 has led to a massive shift of the overall property tax burden from businesses to homeowners. So next, I'm skipping down to what does your vote mean? What is yes? What is no? Is that 13 minutes? OK. I'm going to go much quicker. <laughs> um, a yes vote means, yes, the state can go ahead and sell $4 billion in general obligation funds. A no vote means, no, I don't approve this. OK, since we're hitting 13 minutes and my time limit is 15, I'm only going to do one more because I think this one might be meaningful to many of us sitting in the audience here. How many of us uh, bought our home in California 20 years ago? 30 years ago. Long time. And we've been very lucky. We've seen our houses increase in value exponentially. So this is another one, the theory being behind it. Let's make it easier for seniors to sell their homes because then we'll have more single-family houses available for younger people to buy. Now, basically, we probably all know, those of us who are seniors, that if we decide to sell our home, if we're over 55, or if I was severely disabled, or if my home was destroyed in a natural disaster, I could sell my home right now and buy another home of equal value Actually, you can go up to 105%. Let's say equal value or less and keep my property tax. Now, when Prop 13 was first passed, you could do that. You could transfer to any county in California. There are 58 of them. Today, you can only transfer to 10 because many counties don't like this because they lose money okay, on that sale of the house. The other thing is I can do this once, currently in Proposition 13. I also qualify for a deduction from the federal government one time, 250 for a single, 500 for a couple. Okay, that's what we have right now. What this proposes, okay, if it passes, seniors can still sell their home, the same people, seniors, severely disabled, lost your home to a disaster, still sell their home, and they can buy another home in any county, it's saying, and you can apply your assessed valuation on which your tax is based to the new home. Now, if I buy a home less expensive, I actually might save some taxes. If I buy my home more expensive, I can still keep that base amount and only pay the new tax on the difference in the valuation. So they feel this will encourage seniors to move. I don't know. You need to decide whether you think that's good or not. Okay, proponents, I'm going to says it'll increase sales, people will move, it'll increase our housing stock. Opponents say no, we'll lose hundreds of millions of dollars to local services and in particular to schools because those funds come from property taxes and if there's less tax, there's less money. So a yes vote means you wanna change what we have right now Homeowners who are over 55 will be able to sell their home under these new conditions. A no vote means we want to keep things just the way they are. Okay, I'm going to skip to the end, and my closing message, message to you is, what I tell people all the time is, follow the money. Look who's donating, and I do want to mention, and I have these outside, this fantastic website called votersedge.org slash California. You can go in there, read all about the proposition, and see the top 10 donors, and use that to help you make your decision. My other recommendation would be follow or watch the documentary called Dark Money and see how money is infiltrating our politics and what that, that's doing to our democracy. Okay, I am ready to wrap up. I'm thrilled to be here tonight. I think it's a great topic, and I'm eager to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Eleanor. Thank you. Thank you so much.